A UN human rights expert says the Japanese government should do more to protect the health of people affected by the Fukushima nuclear accident. UN Special Rapporteur Anand Grover spent 10 days in the disaster-stricken Northeast. He was examining whether the health needs of evacuees and other people are properly met. Grover criticized the Japanese government for its inadequate response to the crisis, including failing to disclose enough data on the spread of radioactive substances immediately after the accident. He said decisions on decontamination and other measures do not take into account the needs of socially disadvantaged groups. Grover says they include pregnant women, children, and the elderly. He added that he will urge the Japanese government to improve the situation along with submitting what he found. A final report will be given to the UN Council in June next year. Well, with all but two of Japan's nuclear reactors offline, the nation's power companies say they are losing money. Now the second largest utility in Japan is planning to hike its rates. If it succeeds, companies and household customers would pay anywhere from 10 to 20 percent more for electricity next year. Kansai Electric Power Company's president, Makoto Yagi, has asked the Natural Resources and Energy Agency for permission to raise prices. The company wants household rates to rise by almost 12 percent. Corporate rates would rise by just over 19 percent from April 2013. Yagi says fuel costs for thermal power generation have risen dramatically since last year's nuclear crisis and cost-cutting measures cannot compensate. If the application is approved, it would be the company's first full-scale rate hike since 1980. The Canadian town of Port Hope once provided uranium for the Manhattan Project, the effort that created the atomic bombs that hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. But the town's refinery left it with low-level radioactive waste. Now, Canadian authorities are surveying it to see if a cleanup is necessary. The federal government launched the survey this summer. Officials are checking 4,800 houses and buildings in response to concerns of local residents. Nuclear waste from the refinery was mixed with soil and used to build the foundations of homes. The Canadian government later conducted a cleanup of the contaminated soil, but it suspended work in the 1980s after the disposal site became full. Authorities say low-level radioactive materials with readings over the safety guidelines may remain in homes. The survey will take five years and officials say if they find radioactive materials over the permissible level, they'll dig up the waste and transport it to a new disposal site. They're planning to complete the site by 2015. It's another bullshit experiment. Thousands of Malaysians have rallied against the planned startup of a rare earths processing plant in their country. About 10,000 people marched through the streets of the capital Kuala Lumpur on Sunday as public concerns are rising about possible negative effects on the environment. The rare earths plant was built by an Australian resources company in the central state of Pahang. The company is promising any industrial waste will be safely and properly managed. I'm worried about the children's generation. I don't know what will happen if the plant is opened. When it begins operating, the plant will produce about 22,000 tons of neod neodymium a year. The rare earth metal is used in the motors of electric vehicles. As residents are poised to continue their protests, operations at the plant may be affected. If you like NECA wafers, the original candy wafer, yeah, that's a category that really took off, there's no need to watch this video. On the other side of the Sea of Japan, people are also getting ready for an election that could radically change the political landscape. The latest NHK poll shows domestic concerns will be foremost on the minds of Japanese voters as they cast their ballot in next month's lower house election. The poll asked Japanese voters what matters most. 34% said dealing with the economy, 21% replied reforming social security, and 11% cited energy policy, including the use of nuclear power. The disapproval rate for Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda's cabinet hit a record high at 64 percent. That's a three percentage point increase from last week. The approval rate remained unchanged at 22 percent. 
Voters were also asked who they would prefer as prime minister. The two choices were the incumbent Yoshihiko Noda, who heads the Democratic Party, or Shinzo Abe, leader of the opposition's Liberal Democratic Party. 21% of respondents chose Noda, with 26% favoring Abe. 49% said they wanted neither. You're going to get screwed no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> 